All right, guys, welcome to part seven of my medieval Star Wars series. And in this one, we're going to wrap up the whole world. So we have a finished sculpt in the end and we will populate the remaining wall with the rocks. We will use some copy and pasting, but still break up the repetition to save some time on that. And I also sculpt some additional details into that. So yeah, there will be a bit of content for this as well. And if you didn't watch the previous ones and want to know how we get to the state and how we can sculpt the details I did for this wall, I'd recommend to check them out. And then there will be one last ZBrush video where I'll show you how you can vertex paint the individual elements like the rocks and the mortar to have nice masks for texturing. So yeah, let's just jump straight into ZBrush and let's wrap up our wall. All right, in this one, we're gonna take our rocks from here and apply them to the backside. And as we don't want to have them completely the same, we're gonna try to vary it a bit. And at this point, I think we can delete those. I have a backup file where they are still in, so if we're gonna need them or for other projects we still have access to them but for now or for this project we can now delete them so let's go to sub tool and choose delete i hope that i used all of the sides but i think so i mean we have quite many rocks and i don't really see any repetition so this should be enough and what we do now, we're going to select every one of those objects and hide them. And now let's go to merge and let's choose merge visible. So this will merge all of our rocks into one sub tool. And that's now here. We can go in and enable those again. What is this one? I think we didn't delete that. Let's delete that as well. Now let's go to Append and choose that what we merged. It's probably at the bottom here. And to center our pivot, we're gonna um gonna open this lock here, then go to go to unmasked mesh center, and then close the lock again. And now we want to rotate this by 90 degrees. So let's hold shift and hover over the axis here, the Y axis. And this will enable snapping. As you can see, we are rotating by five degrees. Actually we want to do 180, not 90. So now this is perfectly fine. And now the first thing to have more variance or so that it doesn't look exactly the same as here. We're going to rotate that on the X axis. So again, let's hold shift and let's rotate it by 180 degrees. We probably need to get rid of those as you can see this one is now the same as this one and they are just mirrored basically, but you can still see that they are the same. So now let's go to split and split to parts. And now all of our rocks are separated again. So we can delete all of those that are at the edges here. Let's do the same with the ones that are facing um, to the inner of the wall. Okay, so again, this took a while and what's left to do now is to get the mortar in place. And after that, I think I'll populate the rest of this wall without filming it and show you the end result when we go to the next step. But let's first add the mortar here. So again, the same with as with the other side, we'll, um, we'll use the clay built up brush with the stroke set to spray. 
then we can just sculpt in the crevices here. And that's the faster part. Just need to pay attention that you have some variance in that. But our first pass is quite simple and quite fast. This could have used a small rock maybe. This part I mean. And I think the mortar will have enough details for what we want to do with that. Again, we can always add some more details when we start texturing it. But like this, we are getting some nice rough and bumpy mortar. So let's do this side quickly as well. Not too much as we are still missing rocks here. So yeah, as you can see, we now have finished this side. We finished this side and they are quite distinct from one each other. Also, we are using all the same rocks. And I think for the rest of this video or tutorial, I finished this up because filming this will take quite a while and I think it's really too much. So let's just make a cut here and I'll get back to you when all of this is finished. Okay, so I finally finished this part of the wall and at a glance you really can't see any obvious repetition and it will be even less when we texture it. Um, so what I did before, I merged all those rocks here into one part. So we can just um, make them invisible. Then we have this part. We can disable the visibility as well. And also this one. So we basically do the same as we did with this part of the, of the wall. So we disable everything that's visible but the rocks. And we just copy this over to the other side, so we save a ton of work on this. So let's again go to Merge and Merge Visible. And as you can see, our poly count is quite high. And what we could have done, we could have deleted all the inner parts, but I didn't want to do this and my PC can handle that, so that was quite okay for me. Anyway, let's then go back to this part and make it visible again. Then we can go to Append. And this should be that. We can just append this. And pressing, pressing this button here will center the pivot. Actually, we are on the wrong mesh. So now it's centered. Let's move it to the side. Let's just rotate it while pressing shift and do a 180 degrees rotation. Maybe let's, let's try to go to geometry and deformation and let's mirror it on all axes. Now let's go to center pivot again and try to align it nicely and let's rotate it again and now let's try to align it to the side. Then pay attention like we have some rocks that weren't visible anymore so we have to push it out a bit further. Now let's turn on this one again. Maybe the rocks as well. Should be this one. Can do it with the stones as well. One is missing. Yeah, now what's left to do is to sculpt the mortar on this side. And this again is the way nicer part because... Because applying those rocks can be really boring. But sculpting the mortar here is quite fun actually. So we just do a quick pass. And as you already know how to do it, I will speed up the video now and show you what we do next. Okay, so at this point you can see how laggy it already is, but then we are also at 80 million polygons, so this is quite a high poly count. And yeah, what's left to do now is to populate this side and 
um, the other side as well. Let's quickly turn it invisible. And when you do the mortar here, just pay attention that you don't overlook anything. And I think I got all of the crevices, hopefully. But again, you should always go over once more and check if you have sculpted it everywhere in every crevice or not. Um, the sides will be quite fast as those rock look, rocks look quite big. So we don't need as much in the middle here. Let's just finish this motor here. Um, stuff like that we will take care later. And for the edges, um, I often like to blur it a bit as you can see the, the sharp edge from the initial mesh. You can sculpt all around here for now. Yeah, it gets quite leggy. Um, yeah, we could do something about that, but I think at this point it's okay for me, so I don't want to bother. At least ZBrush can handle it, and when we sculpt, it's fluent as always. But yeah, let me finish this, and I'll let you know when we continue. So now that this is finished, we ended up with a rather ridiculous poly count of 85 million polygons. And we still need to exchange those stones with this one, or with those two. And for the next time, I think it would be good to split this project apart. So to do this column in one project alone, and this one in one project alone, and maybe even those in a project alone. But it still worked, so anyway and as you can see we have some issues here as this rock isn't now completely over those stones here so we have to slightly scale it up as well as this one so that they look the same let's actually go in here and delete those and we can turn this on and turn on this column here Oh, the rocks. Let's look at it from the top. Let's scale it like this, maybe. So when you hold um, Shift, you can scale it like that. And let's see if it now looks this, um, if it's now fine or not. Let's actually go in and make those invisible and initially I wanted to have this so that this wall is used together with this wall but I think it also would be nice to have it as a standalone wall but that's actually hard to do um, so it's either you want to have it like that so it's um, perfectly aligned to this one or you want to have it differently maybe let's scale it uh, that's just one axis. So this looks better, I think. Question is, is it now the same? I didn't really pay attention. Let's quickly undo the scaling. And on this one as well. So we scaled it by 1.1. So let's go here and scale it by 1.1 as well. And... Yeah, now we can basically just duplicate those again. I think the pivot is not quite right. Yeah. But I think that's not a big issue. If you would have a wall made like that, it wouldn't be perfectly aligned like with a machine. Oh, this looks a bit much, maybe. I don't know, is this overhang too much or not? Maybe a bit. It's also not great in on this axis. But again, stuff like that wouldn't be perfectly aligned anyway. Let's maybe scale it down by... Yeah, this looks better, I think. Now we can just align it like that. Let's see if we'll have issues at this side. Let's duplicate this one. Let's 
duplicate it again. Yeah, now we have quite a big overhang here. So this will be actually hard to do. What I also don't like is that it looks the same like this. But I really don't want to do an additional one now. But we could. Maybe we can just get rid of this crack or adjust it a bit. So let's go back to our Trim Smooth Border Brush. Let's choose this alpha map. Not quite sure what to do with this overhang now. Maybe we could just make some smaller ones into these gaps. Let's see. Maybe we can get away with just scaling this down. I don't think so, honestly. Let's see. So this would be like that. Ah, that looks really stretched, so... We'd have to sculpt it, sculpt new details on that. Actually, it might work well. I think this will suffice. So let's go to geometry and lower the subdivision level to one, maybe to two. Let's delete the higher. Let's go back here. And does it fit? I think it does. Man, ZBrush got really laggy now. <laughs> um, anyway, let's duplicate that. And yeah, the next issue, problem. As I thought, we probably can fix that. I think when we scale this up slightly, it should be fine. Like this, and then this one as well. Actually, let's delete that. I want to have all of them in the same size. Let's duplicate that one again. That's still not perfect. So we move this. Slightly to this side, scale this one up a bit, duplicate it again. Yeah, this looks good. And we can delete this one. Let's see how all of it looks together. Anyway, let's just eyeball it. Let's now get rid of those, just to flatten this up. Do the same with the rocks. That was a bit too much. Okay, I really should have split this into parts or remesh at some point. Alright guys, so now we ended up with our medieval wall and we have it finished. So in the next one, we're going to vertex paint the individual elements and we will see how we can um, create our mask based on that. And yeah, then we're going to go into Instalot and remesh the whole thing and then we're going to texture it in Instamat. So thanks for watching and see you next time.